reading of the Legislation Bill. In the first reading of the Legislation Bill, I guess we're going to have this speech in parts, like legislation from time to time. And for part two, we have the Honourable Chris Finlayson, who has five minutes remaining, should he wish so to speak. Oh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Indeed, I do. This is a very important issue of black-letter law, and I'm excited uh, by, the, uh, by the legislation. But it would be quite remiss of me on this red-letter day for the Labour Party not to express my sympathy to the Labour Party for their ongoing problems. And I'm, I'm especially sorry for my good friend Trevor Mallard, who has today lost his special uh, buddy at pump class at uh, Body Works in Thorndon Quay, uh, Chris Carter, uh, and, uh, but I won't be there for him because I uh, no, Mr. Robertson, I won't be there because while Trevor does pump classes, I'm upstairs lifting the real tin. But uh, anyway, I digress, and we have important issues to concentrate on this afternoon. I'll challenge him any day. I doubt whether he could lift what I lift. Uh, the uh, the Law Commission proposed that PCO. Oh, he's too busy sunning himself, which is why he looks like an orange. Uh, the Law Commission proposed that PCO should be given enhanced powers of editing when producing uh, reprints of statutes, and this recommendation is implemented in full. Very importantly, the Commission also recommended that there should be a systematic programme of statute law revision. This is a process whereby an Act is reenacted with all the amendments made to it over time incorporated in one single statute. And one of the concerns that's often expressed about New Zealand statute law is, is, is its inaccessibility, and that's what uh, one tries to address here. And under this bill, uh, attorneys general will be required to produce a programme of statutes to be revised during each parliament. The PCO will then be required to draft revision bills in accordance with that three yearly programme, and Parliament will be able to agree that revision bills will be progressed through Parliament under a streamlined process which will be set out in standing orders. Part three of the bill deals with subordinate or secondary legislation. Importantly, it makes provision for disallowance. The categories of instrument that are subject to the disallowance process. Uh, have been revised, and until now it hasn't always been easy to determine whether a delegated instrument was disallowable or not, and this bill addresses that issue. Also in Part 3, the bill makes provision for incorporation of material into legislation by reference to another document. It's a drafting technique whereby a document is given legal effect by being referred to in secondary legislation without being copied out in full or redrafted in some way into the legislative instrument. And finally, Part 4 makes provision for the PCO by updating the provisions in the Statutes Drafting and Compilation Act 1920. The Commission recommended that PCO should no longer be an Office of Parliament but that it should continue to be outside the core public service and it should remain under the attorney's control. So, Mr Speaker, the Legislation Bill represents a very significant step in the process of improving and modernising the New Zealand statute book. It brings together law on drafting, publication, disallowance of legislation for the first time and ensures that legislation is made available to the public in the most appropriate and convenient method. It preserves and enhances the powers of this House to scrutinise and challenge delegated legislation, and importantly, it preserves the independence of the Parliamentary Council Office, which has done such an outstanding job for governments of all hues over many years to ensure that legislation is carefully drafted. Mr Speaker, I commend the bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed... Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, Got the wrong. Yes, the question is the motion be agreed to. Uh, the Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Tremaine.